Two British agents ally with the Dark Lord to see booming business. Somebody write this. And welcome to Somebody Write This, where we use a random plot generator to give us an idea and then brainstorm how that could be a thing somebody might want to write. I'm Hannah. And I'm Jenny. And here to help us with our brainstorming, our guest today is Michael Todd Galloglass. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we are super excited to have you here. As we get started and let our listeners get to know you a little bit, you have your hand in a lot of different (laughs) pieces of storytelling. (laughs) So let's kind of give you our our catch-all question and see where it takes us. What are the kinds of stories that you are drawn to, either as a writer, as a reader, as a watcher? what, What tropes or genres or worlds really have a hold on you? Well written ones. There you go. There you go. Like good quality, like all around. I'm weird because I have one foot firmly, firmly planted in in the genre community, uh, science fiction and fantasy largely, but I also have another foot firmly planted in academia. And as I tell my genre friends, go read some excellent literary fiction so you can write me pretty sentences along with stories where things happen. And I tell my academic literary friends, I said, go read some excellent genre. So while you're writing me some pretty sentences, something actually happens in your stories. Because <laughs> mm. I yes. want the best of both worlds. I want, I want an intriguing plot, story, character development where like high stakes, where things really matter. But I also want prose that I have to chew my way through. Yeah, I, I really that. like that because I think you're right that genre fiction, a lot of folks tend toward right, we're going right to the plot, we're going right to the action, and doesn't necessarily pay as much attention to the actual crafting of the sentences and the, and the right. phrasing. So is that something that, um, well, actually, let me ask you, who are some folks in, in genre fiction who you think really do have that, that craft or that, that skill at writing beautifully? Well, Harlan Ellison is one because he's mm. the one that like started bringing a lot of the literary stuff, uh, literary concepts into well-plotted genre fiction. I think one of the most underappreciated genre writers is M. John Harrison. I'm particularly in love with his Viraconium stories. They're so good. Tim Powers, I think, is greatly underappreciated. Who else? Um, hmm, let me turn around and look at my... <laughs> yeah, look at your bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, somebody I think is doing really good work right now is a friend of mine, Andrea Stewart, with her Drowned Empire trilogy. I think she's been getting a lot of critical acclaim uh, as people are becoming more and more aware of that series. And I haven't finished it because I'm busy writing my own books and everything, but I think she's one to watch. Another one who I'm really, really impressed with and I'm really excited to see where their career grows, not grows, grows and goes is Tamsin Murr, who is doing the Locked Tomb series. Mm. Uh, I read Gideon the Ninth and I'm partway through Nona, no, not Nona the Ninth, Harrow the Ninth, because known as the next book. And she's doing different things with each successive book in the in the series so mm-hmm. it's her first book Gideon the Ninth suffers from being a first book but what a first book and then mm-hmm. i picked up Harrow the Ninth and i was like oh this is a completely different kind of thing and my younger son loves this series and he read Nona the Ninth and he was like and that book is even more different than the second book and so oh, i'm that's like that's cool Right. And so I think what we're seeing now is the younger generation of science fiction fantasy authors are bringing really new stuff and they're they're doing some really cool experimenting. Um, oh, Gene Wolfe is just go read Gene Wolfe, everything Gene Wolfe, because he was just a genius. And there's this guy, Gallo Glass, that's doing some <laughs> yeah. really weird, cool oh, yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I've heard um, of him. But he's not, every, he's not everybody's cup of tea. But so. <laughs> I could talk about this for like 90 more hours, but we're going yeah, we to. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, we have a different agenda here. But exactly. Yeah, no, so I'm at like, some point, we got to move on to our story. Um, <laughs> but folks uh, who are only listening on the free feed, um, we had an amazing conversation there about poetry and the speculative fiction. So uh, only $2 to subscribe to our Patreon and you can get that whole extra uh, interview and it is well worth it. Uh, 
So with that, we are going to move into our brainstorming. So a reminder, the plot that we're working with is two British agents ally with the Dark Lord to see booming business. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you first, Galloglass, what do you think is the, uh, what is what is calling out to you most about this prompt? So, so I want, what I want is the, the, the thing that, like agents, that's the thing that drew me because agents means all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and to get super, super, super meta, I, I kind of want them to be literary agents. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are they are they commissioning the Dark Lord for a memoir? <laughs> well, we'll like we'll see. Like, yeah. yeah, no, I just like I like two British agents because I may be I may be looking for I may be looking for an agent coming, and so that's kind of in the it's kind of at the forefront of my brain. So let's I'm like two British <laughs> literary like agents. Well, yes. and that makes it, the thing that I was drawn to was this weird contrast between the Dark Lord and then it's just about like business, which was not, not exactly what I would have equated with, you know, it's, it's not about ruling the world or conquering this territory or, right. or anything like that. It's about, we need to make more money at our corporation here. Well, cause you know, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> road to hell and all that. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, is yeah. this the devil at the crossroads kind of deal this or is the dark Lord of capitalism? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I do, uh, the literary agents lends itself more to that, that they are, you know, that there is, they want, maybe they're, they're both from are they from the same uh, company or from rival companies? Mm. Um, well, each so competing. Now, now that now that we've got now that we've got literary agencies, I want to I want to get meta with Dark Lord. Yes. <laughs> so so yes, the CEO uh, the CEO of this company of Dark Lord Publishing is actually yes. a Dark Lord, but Ooh. it's. <laughs> Dark Lord <laughs> Publishing, and um, one of the things that Dark Lord Publishing does is they publish, uh, is that they is they publish like either schlock that's just design like so. Let's go. Their best selling title is Fifty Shades of Green, right? <laughs> which is which is kind of instead of like this weird thing that 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 we're spoofing instead of that it's this since it's a prop it's basically the propaganda arm that you should you should be okay with people reading this is like oh it's basically kind of a, a sympathy for the devil kind of thing is like yeah uh -huh, oh uh -huh. let's have sympathy for these dark creatures because they're really not that bad remember because like i remember i remember with twilight i was like but but he's a vampire. They eat people, <laughs> right? This is not a good thing. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. So, Dark Lord Publishing. Two British agents are an ally with Dark Lord Publishing. Just, <laughs> this, mm, yeah. Oh. Please, please, God, somebody go write this story. Because <laughs> I want to I mean, read it. I mean, there's <laughs> so much to be said about, you know, this, about the, <laughs> that it's, that every artist needs to make decisions at various points about, are you going to write something that you absolutely do not want to write, do not believe in, but oh, it's yes. going God. to make you money? <laughs> oh, yes. God. Oh, oh, I did a quest line for an app game that never got into the app game. I mean, I <laughs> needed the money. But, and you're like, this oh, is not what God. I want to be writing. This is not, this is not what I want to be doing right now. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and, that's, and that's part of it. And maybe there's like, like, I think there's something really interesting to be said in here about the, the commodity modification of art <laughs> that you know right. the artists yes. the artists have yes. to kind of go for the highest bidder if they you know because they're not going to make a living most of them otherwise uh -huh. <laughs> oh uh. okay Ooh. so we do so we play we play on the love triangle trope except except instead of instead of a romance it's um the two agents are both courting this up and coming writer that they yeah. know is going to be yes. awesome and so and so it's which so we can do sort of like we can like we can totally just play like all, like so we could do like a team like play with the love triangle like team edward team jacob or yes. um, yeah. team 
<laughs> what's the what who are the two guys from from um hunger games oh yeah Peta and gail <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, those two yep. guys. Like we can totally <laughs> play with the whole love triangle trope, yep. but this play time, on all the on all the tropes of like of they go out to a nice dinner together. And oh yeah, and then <laughs> stand outside like, with the boombox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I came on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is so awesome. <laughs> Uh, uh, I hell uh no I don't need another book to write I've got too many <laughs> this is this is to put in the, in the back burner when you are like what, oh. do, what do I do with this oh yeah. I have oh. more please somebody go write this book for me <laughs> oh oh okay we I'm, I'm, we have a little bit <laughs> <laughs> you got it with the boombox, Hannah. Oh, I did. I did. Oh, cause say any. Oh my God. Say anything. What like that was my movie, man. Oh, there you go. There you go. That was my movie. Um, oh. But in this, they have to go all out. So it's an actual band. Yes. Yes. And oh, it's like, and the the doing the. But they're still playing ooh. in your eyes. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, I'm going to pause this real quickly just okay. to get us our title before because okay, we are okay. on a roll, and I'm scared to stop us later. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so our title, our title, we can definitely work with. Our title is just Carly. So we have a oh, name. Gosh. Um, so our- this could be <laughs> the name of the 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 what are the agents? What are the writer? The publishing company? The character? The the series? Title of the book. No the title of the book. Somebody already wrote a book named Carly. Or yeah, that was Charlie. Well, you can't copyright a title. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Titles are free reign. Okay, so 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 Carly is an element that we have to use in the story. Carly that's, that's is the, the title, title of our story. story. <laughs> the Carly is the title of our story. And so how does that reference Oh, we can get super, super meta. Carly is the title of the protagonist. Okay. So in in um, the book that they're writing, or in the book in the book that the okay. So 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 we have the we have the protagonist who is the writer, right? Okay, and the writer is writing a book about Carly, and so Carly then becomes the title of the book. Yeah, or yeah, or no, the no, the title of our book is. So, but I want it. To, okay. No, no, no. no. Carly. <laughs> we Carly didn't break is, you with this. <laughs> no, oh, no, no. So Carly is the, uh, so Carly is the title of the book we're writing. Um, so the fictional book that um, the two agents are fighting over is Fifty Shades of Green. The main character of that book is Carly because one, and so now I'm getting sort of vibes from um, one of my, one of my, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite writers is um, um, Flan O'Brien. He's an esoteric Irish writer, and he wrote a book at Swim Two Birds, which is about an Irish, an unnamed Irish dude writing a book about a dude writing a book. Oh gosh! And, <laughs> and in the and in the thir- the bottom layer of this writing, the characters in the the fictional book written by the fictional protagonist within this book of fiction rebel against that protagonist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. That's what I was saying. Like, does does Carly is she an actual? She's a character in the book that's being written, but is she does she come forward as a character in our story? So okay, so here's she like the angel. Is, is she? An, <laughs> So I'm wondering a little bit of, um, you know, the the writer is is being courted by these two agents who both want to want to take his work to Dark Lord Publishing, <laughs> um, and are trying to to craft it. So I'm wondering if there's a little bit as well where maybe this is not just just schlock that he that that our writer doesn't like, but maybe there's also an element of it that is um, that is actually like exploitative. Maybe Carly is a real person, and they're trying to like capitalize on Carly's uh, on Carly's real life tragedy to bring it into the book to maybe spin wild theories about what actually happened to her. <laughs> and Carly, so- Carly is the one who got away. Okay. So, so Carly is, so, so, 
so and this this we play on the the we can play on the Twilight thing where Stephanie Myers was like I dreamed yeah. about these characters right I th- this was my <laughs> yeah, dream and Edward was her dream lover like yeah. weird um, but you know Gosh. she makes more money than I ever will so what, <laughs> what are you gonna do but she went to the Dark of, Lord <laughs> so so we make meta commentary is that Carly is the high school cheerleader one that got away. And so this is so then the 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 fifty shades of green is equal parts wish fulfillment and revenge. Ooh. You know how writers do yeah. the revenge thing? Not yeah. that I have ever written multiple books of poetry. <laughs> um but no, anyway. <laughs> um but uh yeah, so it's this equal balance of like a uh, 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 wish fulfillment fantasy and revenge fantasy, and so the the right and and so the the book Fifty Shades of Green is is so like talks about re- like like reveling in the pseudo romanticism of uber toxic relationships which yeah. is why yeah. which is why dark lord publishing wants to get it yeah right? uh-huh. yeah <laughs> yeah just like feeding god, into I'm all so the good. worst instincts and i and i like god, the idea I'm so that the, good <laughs> <laughs> you got this you got this yes. the, the writer you know starts off writing this as you know a cathartic exploration of, of his right. own thing and maybe you know he gets to a point where you know i've worked it out and the both the agents are trying to like push him to make it more more lurid more dis- more exploitative more put in actual facts about her <laughs> that people will be able to dox her in the book <laughs> Or um, one agent is pushing for the wish fulfillment. Oh, we got like and an angel one and devil. agent <laughs> is and one like like totally do the 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 demon devil or the day de- uh, the demon angel on each shoulder. So one is doing the wish fulfillment. You know, get this uh, like this is this could be so good for you and this upbeat story. And the other one is like, no, let the world know how terrible she is. Right? Oh God. And, and and um so you have the so, devil and the worser devil <laughs> <laughs> right but they both want to but they both want to exploit it for money right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and i and i like the idea because we absolutely as writers absolutely take you know real people in their lives and write about them cathartically to understand them and to relate so like that's 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 a very natural part of us telling stories we retell right. our own stories <clears throat> The biggest, um, the biggest lie in publishing is the. This is a work of fiction. Uh, yeah. Any any resemblance, <laughs> any resemblance to character, <laughs> any resemblance to re- a real person's living or dead is co- totally coincidental. That is the Push biggest off. lie in publishing. <laughs> On some level, we're all just telling our own stories again and again. Uh, and so, so I really like the idea that he is that that our writer has written it out in a way that that does accurately, you know, capture is cathartic for him, is relatable, does capture the hurt and the loss that he felt. And then they're like, you have to, you know, you have to dive deeper into this and make this darker and angrier and meaner than you ever felt. Then will be helpful for anybody else, um, but it will sell really well because it's juicy. <laughs> so, so um, I, I now I have. So uh, just because it's the default mode for most people, um, uh, just because it's the default mode that most people relate to with storytelling, I'm going to dive into the sort of the three act structure, which is not my favorite, but (laughs) so people can do this. So the first act is, um, is the author, our protagonist that will let, will let whoever's going to write this story for me. Um, <laughs> is going around to writing workshops and writing events and pitching the novel and pitching the novel and pitching the novel, all wa- juxtaposed with the two agents um, being called by dark, basically dark lord publishing. Going, what do you, what do you got? 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 My yeah. dear Wormwood. <clears throat> the second act is. The two, uh, the two agents courting the writer, trying to go. Oh, write this story. I've got a deal for you. Write it this way. 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 And as a twist, the the second act ends with the actual publication of the book. The third act is Carly taking the author to court. 
Yeah. Dun, dun, I was dun, like, dun. I think actual Carly needs to show right. up. <laughs> actual yeah. Carly shows up or uh, not. Act, uh, so the, the very end of the second act, which is where we, we're, we're thinking everything's going to be great, right? Normally the end of the second act is where the, the characters at their, their lowest, the book is out and it's the, and it's, um, the Dark Lord Publishing has set up like this Oprah clone um, talk show thing. <laughs> yeah. And our protagonist gets served papers by Carly's lawyer on the show. And then the Ooh. rest is the, and the, the rest is the court battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's some, I, I think there's, yeah, he has to kind of reckon with the fact that he has, he has absolutely like dragged her name through the mud in a way that was not artistically right. necessary. <laughs> that was just financially for the booming business. Yeah. Uh, there's so my favorite my favorite musical <laughs> is uh, the last five years, which is a two a two person musical about a, a failed relationship, and it was lo- it was loosely based on the composer's actual uh, marriage that had fallen apart, and mm-hmm. there oh, was no. in an early draft, <laughs> um, uh, his his ex the story goes did make him change some of the the lines uh, some of the songs and rewrite some of the songs <laughs> because they were too explicitly about her <laughs> so she like she made him change the name of the character so it wasn't her name and uh she had to he had to remove um references to like her he has a whole song about her being irish and she was like nope that's too close to me that's too clearly based on our relationship and so it reminds me of that where she's like you absolutely you know you took this fictionalized story but it's clearly about me it has my details in it my facts in it you did not that's have right. permission to do that <laughs> it's, it's it's, it's like that bit in How I Met Your Mother. I have. I, I never saw I How I Met this. Your Mother. So, yeah. oh, oh, the the main character is in a relationship with a gal, and then she ends up marrying somebody else, and that somebody else makes a movie that is so oh, clearly right. with him being the he's like the super the villain in it, being the super okay. villain with the name that's just right. barely changed. It's it's a yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. One of my, one of my teachers, and this this is this is my feeling on it and everything, and why 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 I am total. I am sure at some point I'm going to be the bad guy in somebody else's written work, <laughs> and I'll be okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because I I I will fully admit I am a lot of personality, and I rub a lot of people the wrong. I like I just move through life, and I rub people mm-hmm. the wrong way, but um. Um, <clears throat> one of my teachers who was a Pulitzer finalist, so people can then like do their own research on who that is, yeah. said <laughs> in a class, if people wanted you, uh, to write better about them, they should have treated you better. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, you know, we do, we do make that like totally false disclaimer at the beginning of our books, but yeah. you know. Well, anyway. I mean, that leads me to my my final question is, you know, we go into this court battle and my question is, who who are we rooting for? Are we rooting for both of them? Because both of them have, like, that he did go too far and she didn't deserve to get dragged that far. Or is there a vindictiveness to, to her? Or is there a vindictiveness to him? I think... Uh, I think I'm going to leave that detail up to the reader or the writer yeah, of the, the writer. whoever's going to write yeah. this story for me because I yeah. think <clears throat> I think that that's something that will probably have to come out after a draft or two. Like this really strikes me as a story that is going to that it, that that this is this story. It, should somebody go and write it, is going to take a couple of drafts to really figure out because I think the challenge in this is. Just like the just like the two agents are arguing about are trying to get no make her all evil make her make this wish fulfillment make this revenge make this wish mm-hmm. fulfillment make this uh-huh. revenge uh-huh. make her nicer make her meaner I think and and since we're doing Fifty Shades of Green uh like I think that um the the challenge in this is that neither of that that the agent both of the agents are they're both slimy but we also empathize with them because you know they're just trying to do their jobs in late stage yeah. free market capitalism yeah the writer's yep. trying to write some of the try the writer's trying to like write something that will make money but also has the thing of i also want to make art and i also got this thing that i got to get off my chest and yeah. how am i going to do this yeah. and 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 carly is 
caught also, in the crossfire, really. <laughs> caught, at least <laughs> caught in the crossfire. But what, 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 like, how do you make it so that depending on the scene and the perspective and everything like that, Carly can be the victim and Carly could be like, there's so many different ways that you could yeah. do this. You could really like, write whoever, this in a way who, where you are, where you are, where you see all the different sympathies for people. And even if you disagree right. with what they're doing, you're yeah. like, I get it. And so <laughs> exactly. whoever, whoever writes this story for us is going to have to get to the note, know the characters better through the writing to be able exactly. to decide that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's one of the things that like, and this is definitely one of those ones that, um, as I tell my students or when I'm talking on panels and everything like that, you don't really know what your story is going to be about until you finish that first draft. Mm -hmm. Once, once you finish the first draft and you can step back and go, okay, so what is this, what is really going on here that um, otherwise you're just guessing because a lot of times you don't even really know the real true opening of your story until you get to the end of it. It's like, Oh no, Right. And so, um, yeah. oh, that person's please, the bad guy. Oops. Please, God, somebody go write this for me. Yeah. I need this book in my life. I just don't Same. have the time to we've, write it. We have been begging people for four years to write all these stories. <laughs> I am still trusting that at some point, you know, stories take time. I'm trusting that at some yeah, point somebody's going to email me and be like, I just published a book based on your fourth episode. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> back in back in 2018 or whatever it was, 2019. Right. 2019. Um, yeah. do you, do, so the other thing is is well some people might be like, "Oh, I don't want uh I don't want to run the risk of copyright infringement and everything like that." You the thing is is we can't copyright the ideas. You can only no. copyright the execution right. of the idea. Exactly. So anybody who's listening to this, run with them. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, especially this one. Please run yeah. with you, this you one. You have us There's... recorded evidence of us begging you. <laughs> please right. do write something. <laughs> like the thing is, is if 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 somebody did this and did this well, yeah, yeah, th- this would this would I'm I I can think of any number of literary agents that if this was well done, that they would go, yes, we'll go. Like I could see, I could see. A so if you need recommendations work. after writing it and you right. want to actually, you know, we can figure out who we can send it to. Right. Oh. This, this is one of those ones that I think big houses would make a big bidding war for if it's, yeah. if it's well done. Dude. So that's the yes. thing is everybody yeah. learn your craft, study <laughs> Do your <it> craft, well. <laughs> learn to write well, and then yeah. make this, make this gem of a novel we have concocted. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, listeners, the, the 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 gauntlet has been thrown down. <laughs> we want to see this. Um, I'm so glad I came on this podcast. <laughs> yay, yay. This is so uh, good. With uh. that, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna we're gonna end into our closing segment where we're just gonna you've been talking about all these stories and creating our own, but we also want to tell you other stories that you should check out, uh, things that we think uh are worth looking into. Um, I'm going to recommend, I just watched, uh, no, I'm going to change what I'm doing. All right. <laughs> I had an old favorite <laughs> and a new and a new watch geared up, but I think I want to do the old one. Uh, so I just rewatched one of my absolute favorite classic rom-coms. We had a rom-com trope in this story. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So uh, Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy in Desk Set is a truly charming story about uh, early, early, early days of computers um, where uh, Catherine Hepburn works as a, um, like a researcher for, uh, she works in reference uh, for a, a major broadcasting company. And so she and her her coworkers look up all the facts and she fact-checked everybody. And, uh, and Spencer Tracy plays like an efficiency expert who comes in looking to see, can they bring in a computer to help them out with this? And it's really, uh, the the dynamic between the two of them, of course, is always really excellent. Um, uh, we watched it uh, as, we watched it as a Christmas movie because there's an extended Christmas scene in it, so why not? Uh, but it's just a really, it's really funny and really charming. And um, especially in older movies that don't always allow their women to be intelligent characters. <laughs> um, mm. Catherine Hepburn is usually one of the the actresses who is an exception to that. And she is, yes. she plays an absolutely brilliant person here who is underestimated um, because she is a woman. And, but we get to see her be the smartest one in the room many, many times. And it's, it's a delightful watch. So if you have a chance to watch Desk Set from, I think, 1957, definitely give it a shot. Um, Jenny, what would you like to recommend? I would like to recommend, I've recommended before on the podcast, one of my favorite TV shows ever was Monk, starring Tony Shalhoub. And it's a story about a detective 
he's neurospicy. He has severe, severe anxieties, but he's an absolutely brilliant detective. And uh, ultimately, over the course of the series, he's trying to solve uh, his wife's murder, which he eventually does at the end and learns that before they were married, spoilers, uh, she had she had a baby and and which she gave up for adoption, a little girl. And so he gets to meet his his wife's daughter and Aww. enter her life, which is lovely. Now, just yesterday, Aww. as of this filming, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so it's such a funny, heartwarming show. Uh, absolutely recommend. But just yesterday, uh, Peacock came out with. Mr. Monk's last case, a movie uh, taking sort of the story up, it all up. 12, yeah, 12 years after where unfortunately, and this is in the blurb, so this is not a story, uh, Trudy's daughter, his wife's daughter, Molly, uh, who they've been with each other, Poor Mr. Monk, who's afraid of germs, has been through the pandemic now. Oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, and she's engaged and about to be married and her husband loves to go bungee jumping. And this time he cut his cord <gasps> six feet too long. Oh no. And oh. right. And so she's begging uh, Adrian Monk to get on the case and help her solve it. And it's just such a cute movie. I have no idea how it'll play for somebody who hasn't watched the show <laughs> yeah. because there are so many little Easter eggs and references. And, oh, yeah, I remember that for me who loved the show. But it's still just a delightful movie. And if you don't want to watch the whole TV series to get to know these characters, at least watch the movie because it's just wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Gallo Glass, you get to recommend something as well. What's something you think our listeners should check out? Uh, Hades Town. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Hades Town is a jazz, blues, gospels retelling of the Orpheus Eurydice myth. It is. It is just astounding. I've seen it on Broadway twice. If you can catch one of the traveling things, it is just. Uh, I saw it the first time in 2022. Uh, I was going to New York, and I, I had. Um, I was at a conference in Philly and wound up uh, meeting um, some friends for an evening of wine and snacks and stuff. And I told them I was going to New York and they said, oh, you got to see Hades Town." And I'm an old, back in, to date myself, back in the 90s, I was huge into swing dancing. I, I knew swing <laughs> dancing before yeah. the big swing craze back then. So I wound oh, wow. up teaching and everything. And they knew that I was into jazz and swing and stuff. And they said, you have to go see Hades Town." And I was like, they said, it'll be your favorite musical. And I was like, I don't know. I really like Hamilton a lot. And they said, no, you, <laughs> you go see Hades Town." Mm-hmm. And so since, oh, you know, I was in New York and I was, I was splurging for, it was a splurge week for me. I got front row seats. And by the end of the first number, I'm just weeping tears of joy going, <laughs> this is the most beautiful thing I've seen in my life. It's <laughs> so good. And then, oh, it's just, there's so much good stuff. There's mm-hmm. so much good stuff in that. And, um, Oh, and it's also it's it's set in sort of a depression dust bowl setting. Yeah. Nice. So it, everything works together. And one of the things that I love about it also is the music is pretty good. But it's one of those ones that like truly to truly appreciate the genius and brilliance of it. You have to see it live with the yeah. set. The band for most for most of the for most of the play, the band is on stage with the oh, that's, um yeah, and it's that's the awesome. like there's like you see the set changes in real time mm-hmm. as yes. things are going, and they're fit into the they're fit into the music and into into everything, and it's just like oh my god, it's the- so. Good. I was really so, blown away by the choreography, like oh all my, these sort of industrial right? uh, machine factory choreography scenes. Right, just yeah, like, oh, this is gorgeous. and the lanterns <laughs> and like, oh, yeah, like is, when I saw it, the, the first time I saw it, I could have when they were in the uh, wait for me scene, I could have stood up and grabbed one of the lanterns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, I yeah. was like that close. Oh, it's so wow. yeah. Oh. Everybody, go see. Go just if you can. Go see Hades Town. It is so good. You will become a better storyteller because of it. Mm. Awesome. I've never been to uh, New York and I miss out on so much. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the, it, it does have a travel. It I does saw it yeah, 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 in San yeah. Francisco. So yeah, okay, so cool. it is touring for it. So and it, it is one of those shows. I think it's going to be touring forever. So yeah, I awesome. think keep it's, an eye it, out. It's, it's not it's closing like, anytime soon. That and Hamilton are the two big ones right now. Yeah. Yes. Hades Still, and Hamilton just Hamilton. touring because they. Yeah, because they both came out before the pandemic, and they're still both going strong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, keep an eye out. Hades Town is very likely coming to a city near you in the next couple of years. <laughs> um, all right. Well, then before we close out, we want to make sure that you get a chance to plug anything of your own. Um, you know, you're you're all over the place. You have a lot to, out there that people can find. Where should people go to find more of you? Um, basically, my my two. Uh, the the two places to find uh, my stuff are at my website mtodgalloglass.com or my Patreon uh, which is patreon.com slash mtodgalloglass my Patreon uh, I am have this weird I, I post stuff all the time pretty much almost daily um, right now my, my big thing on Patreon that anybody can go and read are the Spellpunk Requiems which is me just doing this weird surreal slipstream science fantasy multi-universal strange homage to all the writers that I loved growing up uh, um, and 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 uh, I uh, with you know bipedal sentient cephalopods and uh, a new verb form because I needed a new verb form, so I invented oh. one. Um, <laughs> so uh, that yeah, that's that's that. And starting every leap year, uh, I do a flash fiction story every day, and those will be posted on my Patreon for people to just go and read. So if you want, if you want uh, a bite sized chunk of of fiction every day, just, you know, head on over to my, head on over to my Patreon. Yeah. Very sounds nice. awesome. Um, thank you so much for joining us for this. This was an amazing <laughs> ride. Oh, I, yes. I did absolutely my pleasure. I am like, like, I wish that I could make time in my schedule to write this, the, to write Carly <laughs> myself. <laughs> God, oh, so, we'll see if any if so, all of your ideas suddenly like grind to a halt, and that is the only one that's calling to you. Maybe oh, one of those that, days. that will never happen. I have so <laughs> I have <laughs> at, like as I tell people, like people go, how do you like the the the, the so many people go, where do you get your ideas? Like, how do you not get ideas? <laughs> right, right. How do you not like, get ideas? <laughs> I have a list of 400. <laughs> right. I have more, I, like, I have more ideas than I ever have lifetime to write them in. Exactly. Yes. Uh, uh, oh, so I, thank you so much. Yeah. This has been so cool. Yeah, awesome. Oh, it's, it's been a good one, folks. That is our episode. <laughs> As a reminder, you can find us every other Thursday wherever you get your podcasts, including on YouTube now. And join our Patreon for bonus material. Today, we want to especially thank our patron, Grace, for supporting us. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at WriteThisPod or on Facebook slash Somebody Write This. And if you've been inspired by this episode and have questions or comments or a story about Carly or anything else, email us at somebodywritethis at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be back with another episode in two weeks and we will see you then. And as they say, there is shelter beneath an old man's beard. Mm-hmm.